programs and, and kind of talk about how best to meet the needs of all of our diverse classes because everything has kind of shifted as we continue to come out of the pandemic. We have people that are staying in the same format or teaching the same way they were prior to the pandemic or post pandemic or a little bit of both. So we're going to talk about those in just a bit. I wanted to review really quickly just what we have available for Aztec in regards to our curricula. You know, we have both our digital and our print programs, and many of our print programs are also available as EPUBs or eBooks. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But for our Catholics or our TAVE folks, we have materials from the very, very beginning all the way to the very, very advanced levels. Uh, through that Aztec continuum of learning. We do have everything K or first grade all the way to 12th grade for those of you who are K-12 or former K-12 like myself. And keep in mind that many of those products, both print and digital, are also available in Spanish. For our print materials, we do have you know, a specific learning system methodology. What's really great about that is that our students can use a pretest, and what I use for the pretest for my students is I use it as kind of a show what you know. You have a lot of catchphrases in my class, that's one of them is show what you know. So the pretest shows me what they know in our lessons, and then we can focus on the instruction, which are those lessons in our digital program. For our students who do fairly well on that pretest, some of those little blue or those little check marks in front of the lessons might go blue. And that means when they showed me what they know, they showed me that they already knew these things so we can bypass them. So my class, if you get a little check mark, you get to bypass the lesson and move on to the drill. If you get all check marks on those lessons, then we bypass the entire unit. So it's really important to show me what you know so we can make sure that we're targeting instruction to what that student actually needs. Then when we go into skills practice, those are our drills, and the drills are just 10 question quizzes. And again, in my class, I want my students to get an 80% on those drills, and then also an 80% on that post test before we move on to the next lesson. So we're gonna go kind of quickly through some of the different products and things that we have available just to kind of highlight them. So when we talk about the different lessons that you can teach, the different ways that you can teach your class, this stuff kind of feels like, oh, I know what she's talking about. So again, pre-test, lessons, drills, and post-test for our digital materials. And then again, like I had mentioned before, we have print materials also at all of those NRS, TABE, or CASAS levels. So if your students are working in fundamentals or foundation level on the online program, we also have the fundamental skills print materials. They are available reading, language art, and writing, and also math. And you can see at the bottom of each of those texts that they are for that grade level of K through first, second through third grade, or fourth through fifth grade. And what I really like about these materials, and I have used them before, is that they are written for adults. So if you're teaching that beginning literacy, kindergarten through first grade of you know, number awareness or letter awareness. You don't have singing bears and dancing unicorns. It's written with pictures and with visuals, but for adults, which I think is very key. For some of our adult learners, starting them on the computer really isn't helpful because that effective filter is so high that we really need to start with them where they are. That's the second thing that we say a lot in my class, wherever you are is where you are, and that's where we're gonna start. And we might need to start with a book before we jump right onto an online program. So we do have those available in both modalities. Then we also have our pre-GED or pre-HSE text. Um, oh, we don't have a little thing that comes up here. I wanted to mention that we now have workbooks for each one of these books, which is Fabulous, and I will tell you right now that this math book is my absolutely most favorite book that we have available. I have leaned so heavily into that book and used it before the pandemic, in the pandemic, outside of the pandemic, in person, digitally or remotely. Uh, it is a really great book. I'm very excited that we have workbooks also. 
the only reason I can't say the same thing about the other books is because I've never used them before. I haven't had access to them on my site. But I have used the math book heavily, and it is definitely one of my favorite books because it has such great step-by-step -step explanations and tons of practice. And I'm super excited that we have a workbook that will have even more practice. So can't say enough about this series. And then our last series, which is equivalent to our high school equivalency for GED or high set, ninth grade through 12th grade, we have our big book. And then we also have our high school equivalency prep series. Those are available both as a workbook and a student book. And all of this content is aligned and it's considered aligned via GED testing service. So it's not just like we slapped it on there because we think we're great. It's because we worked in collaboration with GED testing service to make sure that all of our content is aligned. Uh, the print series, not the big book, but the other series that's in their second edition and includes our high impact indicator lessons as well as our at work lessons, which provide contextualized lessons with practice exercises and work as well. And the topics are all from the Department of Labor's 16 career clusters. So I mentioned before with our books that they many of them are available as EPUBs. Those EPUBs are available either as an individual EPUB that you could put on an individual device. I know a lot of sites that purchase iPads for students to use in class or to check out, they have those EPUBs then loaded onto the device. There's also organizational EPUBs that can be, the licenses can be uploaded into Blackboard or Moodle. And then of course the EPUBs are also available on our Aztec platform, which is really easy for a teacher to add to a classroom. You can see this is a GED level class. And then on the student side, what they would get would be an additional tab up at the top, it's a bookshelf tab. And then they could just click on the book, open it up, and they would be able to navigate through the lessons in the table of contents, or they could also use bookmarks to bookmark the lesson where they left off or where their teacher wants them to work in homework. And then they can take notes on the side of the page and also answer, answer their questions on the page. So it's not just a copy of the page or stagnant picture of the page, it's actually an interactive page where they can put their answers actually within that EPUB for them to go back and review. Aztec also has two other academic courses, GED Play and GED Flash. We're going to talk about those a little bit in our whole lesson high flex blended individual lessons as well. So I wanted to mention them here really quick. We have GED Flash, which is aligned to our GED Blueprint. It has thousands and thousands and thousands of questions across all four of the GED subject areas. We are working to expand that pool of questions as well. Students get questions in sets. So every 10 set would have a new set of questions and they get immediate feedback that explains exactly what the answer is and why that answer is the correct answer. It's really great to use for your students who are prepping for their GED. If they're in kind of that waiting pattern, waiting to take the GED, either because they're close to that passing score or have that passing score, or you know they're waiting for things like funding or childcare or something else so that they can take that test, even for an appointment to open up. So GED Flash is really great for students to get that kind of practice on real life, real live looking GED test questions. GED Play is something else that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. It is a series of videos aligned to all of the major indicators, learning indicators for the GED. They are not in, um, in interactive videos, but there is a voice who's speaking and teaching the class. So it's a recording. There was a study done somewhere and eventually I need to go and look and find out where that study was, but I did read it. And it said that students actually have better learning outcomes if they have a space who is teaching them. And so it's really great that we have incorporated these GED master instructors into these lessons. 
And you can see just from this page, and not only is it just like a stagnant PowerPoint where somebody's talking about what's on the page, but there's a lot of engagement colors, different learning modalities for your students to then access through these GED Play videos. We're going to talk about some different ways that those videos can be used to uh, teach classes. So before we move forward, Brian, do we have any questions I need to ask? Yeah, we have one good one. Um, okay. Can EPUBs be used on Canvas and Aztec at the same time, or those different uh, costs? You know, I believe it's different licenses, but I'm not 100% sure. I would I definitely suggest that that person reach out to the sales team. They would have all of the price quotes and things like that. I am but a teacher and know the teacher side of it. So I would say definitely reach out um, in regards to licensing to the sales team. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of today. So we're gonna look at just a quick review of high flex and blended learning because I know when I went through the lockdown and teach from home thing, we just kind of did what we did and we didn't really know any of the lingo, or at least I didn't and my group didn't because we weren't really involved in the blended learning kind of piece and we hadn't really done any of the research or the reading on it. We just kind of tried to make things work. And some of them did and some of them didn't. But research shows that blended learning is an instructional program in which the students have some control over the time, place, path, and or pace in which they learn. It can be through online learning or it can be 100% through online, partially through online, or even kind of you know, some of it in person and a majority of it in person, excuse me, and some of it online. So again, those big components are there needs to be student control for it to be a true blended learning lesson. And then here's the kicker. The big one for me is the integrated learning experience, which means that whatever the student is working on, it needs to be connected. So if they're working in a blended or high flex learning setting, then whatever they're learning about that subject area needs to be connected. It needs to be one integrated learning experience. And that to me, I think is sometimes where Aztec, the online program, isn't always used efficiently. I've seen lots of classrooms and heard of lots of teachers that do like free Fridays where they'll do synchronous lessons during the day, Monday through Thursday, and on Friday, when they know maybe attendance is gonna be a little low, the students will have some free Aztec time and they just jump on Aztec and do some work wherever they're at. Uh, the same can be true for Aztec being used as a homework piece where the learning isn't integrated. So the teacher, again, is teaching a specific lesson during the day and tells the students, but you can work free on your own in Aztec at home. And so what they're learning in class isn't supporting or isn't integrated with what they're doing at home. For them to have a truly blended learning experience, whatever they're working on in class with the instructor also needs to be the same thing that they're working on with their online or independent or distance learning or remote or however you wanna call it experience. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that looks like in a bit, but just kind of keep that in your head. The other piece of, or the other component for blended learning would be that supervised learning. So from the Christensen Institute, their blended learning definitions and models, it said that a student learns at least in part with supervision or in a supervised brick and mortar location away from home. So that the student has to learn away from home. And what we learned in the pandemic is that our students definitely could learn at home and not in a supervised brick and mortar location, but they do need to be supervised. And there are many different ways for instructors to supervise their students without standing over their shoulder or pacing back and forth and walking around the classroom. There are many ways for us to be able to monitor what our students are doing, if they're learning, if they're meeting their goals, if they're struggling with things. ASIC has great, and I mean great, reports that are very easy to use to monitor what a student's doing and how they're doing it. 
So we'll talk briefly about that. That may come up in future webinars as well. HiFlex has four components. And you know, for a while, I was a little unaware of the difference between HiFlex and Blended. I didn't really know what the difference was, but I did find this article by proliteracy.org. And one of the key differences in between HiFlex and Blended Learning is that reusability and it's defined. And so that's the third chevron there. You know, whatever you're having your students learn from, if they're learning in person with you, you need to be able to take that learning event or activity or lesson and somehow make it accessible for students who were not available or who are not able to participate in that in-person presentation. And so that's just kind of something to consider. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some different options for HiFlex for that reusability piece as we continue on. You know, there's a variety of different models of blended learning programs. These are just a few. You can kind of see, you know, with the orange being the computer and the blue being the textbook. And then you can see some, you know, examples of a teacher instructing or some paired or group work that there are a variety of different blended learning methods. And of course, you can do some more research on those to determine you know, what works best for you. You'll also need to talk to your district and your site to determine you know, what are some of the parameters that you can and can't work or include in your, in your model. It's also important to make sure that you are, for that distance learning part, recording proxy hours you know, which methods are you using? And so I know we've gone over these before and these are very easy to find if you Google the National Reporting Service and Google proxy hours. The three the NRS approve are the clock time teacher verification or learner mastery model. I would again recommend that you talk with your site, look at your district because sometimes those um, protocols are, are are, are different based on the state and based on you know your school district if you're under a school district. So with that, before we jump into the lesson examples, Ryan, do we have any questions? No, all clear. Okay, let's jump into it. So here are some different options, and I'm going to try and talk to all of them at the same time without getting everybody confused. So I'm hoping that this will work, but we'll keep the question line open just in case. I lose some folks along the way, hopefully I won't. So when I think about a lesson, I think about the four different components that I was taught to use uh, as a K-12 teacher. And I kind of incorporate that with my students, especially if I'm doing like a blended or a high flex or a whole group class. I wanna introduce a concept to my students and after that introduction, I'm going to have some sort of instruction. That instruction, again, because we're talking about a variety of different uh, classroom instructional strategies, that instruction could be in person, it could be online, it could be synchronous or asynchronous. They all just kind of vary. Then after our instruction, we would have assessment. And then after assessment, there's either remediation or enrichment. And I like the enrichment piece. This is kind of a new piece for me who's been teaching for 100 years, we always just looked at it as in introduction, instruction, assessment, and then remediation. And then those guys that already got it, what do I do with them? So I like that in this model, it's actually called out. If your students are showing skill competency or concept competency, then you need to have some sort of an enrichment lesson or enrichment activity for them. So here is just one sample. But what I really love about the Aztec family of curricula is that there are a variety of different ways that you could include all of these components or these lesson these uh, curriculum options into your lesson components. So you can see here in the Navy, this is one option. And then you can see in kind of the turquoise, here's a different option. So there are a variety of different ways that you could choose to do this. You kind of have to look at your individual class and figure out, you know, what works best for you. And it might be a little trial and error 
And it might also have to do with what your district or your site has to say about how you do or don't teach. I know some sites are requiring uh, teachers to teach so many minutes per day in person or students are required to come on campus or other sites or other classes are set up where it's a little bit more, you know, student has more choice. So it really varies from site to site. You need to kind of figure out what option is best for you. But what I really like is if you have uh, a number of our different products, then you really do have unlimited lesson options. So what I'm gonna try and do with each of these is explain how you could hit each of these components using a variety of those different products I talked about before. So let's start with the introduction. So we're going to introduce the topic to a student. So here are three different ways that you could introduce the topic to the student, or three different products you could use. We could use the GED Play Video product. We could use a lesson on the Aztec platform, where we could use a lesson from the Steckbond textbook. Keep in mind that the GED Play Video is really only for students who are either at that GED level or just about there. We wouldn't certainly want to introduce a concept to you know, a, a student in a pre-GED and certainly not uh, a foundations or fundamental level student, a, a lower level ABE student shouldn't be introduced to the, their new topic with a GED play video because that GED video is aligned to that GED level or ninth through 12th grade skill and concepts. And so that's just something to kind of keep in mind, but this is certainly one option. Within that option for introduction, you could utilize that video to introduce the topic in a number of different ways. And we can see that in the Navy box to the right. That introduction could occur before class is homework. This would be like your flip classroom. So let's say tomorrow you're going to teach about Oh, let's see, I don't know, um, mitosis. So let's say tomorrow you're gonna teach about mitosis. So you would tell the students the night before they need to watch the video that includes mitosis. That would be that before class flipped model. Or you could tell the students, hey, as you're coming in for our direct instruction class today, as you're coming in, please open up your, your devices and go to the GED Play video and watch the short clip on mitosis before we get started with class. That works really well if you have a class that, you know, let's say starts at eight o'clock, but you know everybody's not gonna be there until 8.30. So they can kind of do some, you know, some different housekeeping things. They can log in, they can get their device, they can come in a little late after dropping off their kids or their spouse at work. And then they can, you know, watch their video and then be prepped and ready to go at 8.30. You could also certainly show it whole class when everybody gets there. And you could do that uh, through a, a digital projector. And then the students could kind of talk about it before you actually start with the instruction. On the Aztec platform, to introduce a concept, you could also have the students do that lesson. And they could do it before, like the night before, if you're going to teach a whole lesson um, during the day when class starts. Uh, they could do it independently between that, you know, 8 to 8.30 gap or 1 to 1.30 gap before your class officially starts. And you could certainly introduce it to the class synchronously using, again, a digital projector. And then lastly, you could also introduce a concept by having the student review a lesson in one of the Steph Vaughn textbooks. Again, before class is a flipped independently as they arrive, or perhaps you walk through it together as a whole class. So here's an example of that GED play. This is just kind of how GED play looks. So let's say I was actually, instead of mitosis, I was looking at having my students uh, review and get ready for main idea and theme development. So I'd have them go in GED play to this um, unit of videos. And you can see there's a handful of videos in this unit. And then I would have them watch the video, but instead of having them watch the whole video, I would just have them watch a short clip. Because you can see here that it says video one, and there's a lot of different topics that are covered. But main idea and details, it starts at uh, two minutes and 41 seconds, 
and it goes until about five minutes or so. So it's like a two and a half minute video, which is a really great kind of, hey, this is what we're gonna talk about. Here's some of that vocabulary so you know what we're talking about. There are multiple videos that cover that concept. So here's another unit of study. And this one has central ideas and themes. So again, I would have the students just watch this short little clip, maybe for about a couple minutes or so. So you can imagine for a student who works during the day or has kids and also has, you know, has is trying to come to class, an introduction or homework assignment that's only watched five minutes of video is really easy for them to do. It doesn't take a lot of time. It isn't as stressful as like, complete this page or complete this lesson worth of work, which might take, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. Then once the students come in for instruction, again, you can kind of fidget and use what works best for you. Again, either independently, small groups, or whole class. So again, you could use that GED Play video for instruction. You could use the Aztec platform lessons for instruction. And those students could work with them whole group or they could work with them independently. You could also teach the class whole group by using the lesson and also stream it through Aztec add-on lecture tool. And so with the lecture tool, I can actually stream through the system and record my teaching the lesson. So I could teach it in person by uh, uh, showing it through the digital projector, but also stream it out to students who perhaps couldn't come in and record it at the same time and make that recording available again through Aztec lecture tool. Now, I know the lecture tool is big and meaty and we've had a presentation on it before. I would say for any questions about the lecture tool, please reach out to your service rep. Um, and they can answer more questions about it. And we will continue to have more webinars on lecture because it is so meaty. I keep jumping in. Every time I jump in to do a presentation on that, I learn more about it. So we will definitely have more of those to come because it is a lot to cover. We could also do a Steph Von textbook lessons as well. And so again, just continuing through, they could do that lesson. You could work through it whole group, presenting it to the entire group, going over key concepts after each slide is presented. And then the skill checks, you could use as short checks for understanding, where you would ask the students to answer the questions, or you could pause and let the students answer them on their own. And there's a variety of different ways that you could use that. And then for assessment, of course, we have all of these different materials that are available, but instead of using GED Play or play, we would ask, I would suggest using GED Flash as an assessment. It's an option. Um, I would say that's really great for perhaps a unit review. If you're reviewing, if you've come to the end of a GED unit, GED Flash would be a great assessment. But if you're just coming to the end of a lesson, probably the Aztec uh, platforms drills would be better. And again, keeping in mind that this is only for GED students would be using the GED Flash videos. Of course, you could always use the Stefan textbooks as well, but there are a variety of different assessments that you could choose from. And then for the final piece would be that remediation or enrichment. And so you could use either Flash or Play for the remediation or enrichment. And again, it could be in independently might be enrichment and remediation would be kind of small group work. The other thing that you could do is go back and review those lessons and drills, but for, um, for enrichment, you could also, if your students are working in like pre-GED or pre-HSE level, and you're looking for enrichment, you might bump it up to the next level and work on the GED materials as next level teach and next level assessment. So you could also use those textbooks, just a variety of different things you could use for that remediation. This is just kind of what I do for my students in regards to where am I gonna go and what am I gonna work on. If they're 80% or above on their post-test or drill, we're gonna look at enrichment for remediation. If it's right around 70%, we might just repeat that drill or lesson. If it's below that, we're gonna review that lesson and then repeat that drill.
But again, there are a variety of different options available. It, it's just kind of limitless in regards to how you set it up to meet the needs of your class. So final questions before we say goodbye for today. I think that's all we have, no questions. Awesome, well, thank you everybody for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next week. If you do have any questions, please reach out to support at aztecsoftware.com or check out our website, aztecsoftware.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next week.